I'm Kimberly Calhoun and welcome to Money Masters. We are starting a new TV series called Startup Masters and we are here at CES and one of the greatest things happened while we were here. We found a organization called Showstoppers and they were doing a project called Launch It and I have with me here Dave Leone who is one of the owners of the Showstoppers. Hey, welcome to Money Masters. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm great, thanks for having me. Oh, well thank you for coming. God, this was so exciting and thank you for letting us film and be part of the Showstoppers Launch It. Um, this a is pleasure. a not been around very long project, right? The Launch It project? Actually, the uh, Launch It has actually been running for about eight years. Okay, eight years. Eight years. We started this um, uh, as a way to provide a service to the startup companies, the companies that are in Eureka Park, because uh, a lot of these companies had trouble uh, finding journalists, finding investors here at the show. And so what we would do is we were able to create this program uh, in collaboration with CTA and CES, of course, to highlight a group of companies who apply to pitch to our event. It doesn't cost anything for them to come in. Uh, and what we do is we actually go through a, uh, a process where they apply to have an opportunity to pitch. And then we have a series of judges, a group of judges, that will go through, evaluate each company, uh, rate each one, and they can rate them on if they feel they're, it's a great company just because they want to see them. They may look at their business plan, a number of different factors. The beauty of this is that as an organization, Showstoppers does not get involved. We are an event organizer, and we let the judges determine who they want to see. And then we reach out to the companies that they have chosen, we bring them into the room, 12 companies are chosen, and they each get four minutes to pitch their products. We don't try to make this event a uh, an investor-driven event. We do have the investors coming in. But CES is not the best platform as far as investors finding places to invest their, their money. So what we're trying to do is we try to drive brand awareness of these products. Well, many of these companies, they don't have extensive PR operations, they don't have extensive marketing operations. They're startups. They're fortunate enough to be able to participate in Eureka Park. And so by extension, we bring them into the room. We fill the room with 250, 300 journalists, as well as investors, and they get their four minutes to pitch. There's no place for them to do that else here at CES. No, there's not. I've been coming here for a couple of years, and I just I, I find this as a wonderful platform for a startup to get that extra leg up mm -hmm. and meet the right people. Yep, and so they go through the process. They talk about, uh, they talk to the companies. They interview them as well right at the event. They ask questions, and there's actually a ranking. There's a judging process right at the event. And we always want to have some award. Everybody wants to have something. Exactly. And so here we have the opportunity. We provide them space in our Showstopper event that occurs the next night. And we always hold that event over at the Wynn Hotel for 25, 26 years. I'm, I'm sorry. We've been hosting the Showstopper Media Reception over at the Wynn Hotel, uh, you know, in conjunction with this show. And so last night, the winning company from Launch It was Mauser. They came into our event at no cost. They had a table, and they were able to meet any number of journalists. We had over 1,800 journalists in the room last night. Uh, that, and there was food, and there was drink, and they were, everybody was just having a great time. Yeah, 1,800 journalists in one room at one time, and uh, we were lucky enough to have Scarlett kind of stand in the middle of them and film this, and we're going to show the viewers what it looks like, you know, to be standing in the middle of this stampede yeah. of, of journalists. That's a lot of journalists, and yeah. you pack them in, don't you? Yeah, I kind of, I had told Scarlett, and I said, can you do me a favor? I asked a favor <laughs> before the show, I had this idea. I said, wouldn't this be kind of be cool uh, to, to show the viewers what it must be like at some of these events at CES? Some of these press conferences, they get very crowded. What would it be like to be waiting on the queue to come into the Showstopper event and then experience that? And she was kind enough, or maybe foolish enough to believe <laughs> that she was safe, because we planted her right in the, in the stream with all of these people coming in. It took 25 minutes. And I, I haven't even seen it yet myself, but I am understanding that the video is pretty awesome. 25 minutes getting everybody into the room to 
and, and just we fill up this massive ballroom in 20 minutes. It took 20 minutes for all those journals to get in there. It sure oh, did. We were amazed. We're going to have to talk to Scarlett about what it felt like. I'm sure it felt like going through a school of fish. <laughs> Coming at you at one. So, yeah, wow, when, the, when, the, when, when the vice president of the Wynn Hotel comes up to me and says, Dave, we need to relieve some of the pressure in the hallway, it's time to open the doors. We were a little bit delayed because we had 135 companies in the room last night. And we want to make sure that every one of those companies is ready to go. We don't want to open up the doors ahead of time, you know, at where some a company is setting up. Sometimes they get delayed, sometimes they get stuck in traffic in this town. So we held the doors for five minutes. And the journalists know that we will hold the door for a couple of minutes to make sure that everybody has an equal opportunity to get set up and be prepared because nobody wants to be in that situation. Right. And I mean and packaging is everything. That's what you're teaching them, right? Pretty much. We want them to have the best experience they can have as far as showstoppers, whether it's at the launch of event and the services that we provide there, or it's at the showstopper event itself here at CES. Right now, the showstoppers, you guys have been doing this for a long time. It's you and your brother, Steve. And my other brother, Bob. And your other brother, Bob. Yep. So, how did this start and when? Well, it's a great family business, and I'm not quite sure how it works sometimes, but it does work. Um, Steve and Bob actually started Showstoppers during the Comdex days, oh, wow. and the I quite a long time. And the idea of this is that there are a number of companies, as you, especially the smaller ones, that come to these very large shows, and it's hard for them to get the attention of the press. You know, the Samsungs, the Amazons, the, the Sonys. They do a, uh, an amazing job mm -hmm. of, of having press conferences. They've got very large teams of marketing people. What do you, and so they're always crowded as far as their press conferences. And I don't take that, that away from them. But the show is here also to serve the smaller companies, the, the startups, you know, the companies that are just getting out there. And the journalists have sometimes a hard time finding them. Let's think about the geography here at CES. This show has grown enormously over these years. And now, in many of the hotels, there are suites that are being used for presentation. The, ho the, the convention center, the Las Vegas Convention Center, which is bigger than ever now. North Hall, South Hall, Central Hall, the parking lot is all being used by CES. Oh, they put tents up in the they parking They put lot. tents up, I'm exactly. not talking small tents, they look like circus tents. Exactly. And so you have this group of journalists that they have to be every place. They're trying to get everywhere. By hosting a showstopper event, we're bringing a group of, of companies that understand the value of meeting the journalists. We, we call it being press aware or marketing awareness. We bring these companies in. And then what we'll do is we fill up the room with 15, 1,600 journalists that we pre-qualified. We want to make sure that we're bringing in the best journalists to meet these companies. And for four hours, we serve the best food, we buy drink, and we create the opportunity for journalists to go from table to table and talk about, you know, to talk to these companies and, and conduct interviews. And so last night we had the in the lounge in the back, in the blogger lounge, we have journalists from Verge, from Engadget, uh, CNET. They're all sitting there and they're writing right at this event. They're covering the event. We have Larry Maggot from, uh, from CBS News. He's broadcasting. Dave Graveline is on the air. He's and he has his national and international broadcasts. And they're broadcasting, they're conducting interviews at this event, all with the goal of getting brand awareness out there for these companies. Well, because as a startup, it's very hard to get that exposure. It is so expensive to, to get on TV or to get the attention that you need to reach out to the distributors that you need or maybe potential funding. Um, so what you're offering them is that opportunity to shine in front of the media. Yeah. And you do a very, it shines beautifully in that room, I want to tell you. Oh, I've, thank you. It's... I've been coming to CBS for quite some time, and I think that was probably the best food I've tried. <laughs> the desserts were amazing. Well, I'm happy you got, <laughs> I'm happy you got to eat. Well, uh, you know, I didn't. I ran in quickly uh, while we were waiting for someone to interview with, and I grabbed something real quick and got got the taste. It was wonderful. But well, your I'm glad you enjoyed. Your display is beautiful. Thank you. But I, I want to say your um, pits are amazing because you had uh, companies that are very disruptive in 
the changing of the industry. They're like creating things that you only dream about sometimes. Right. I mean, some of the ideas were just out of this world. Um, being able to translate language from an earbud. Isn't um, that amazing? Yes. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, we, you know, the Showstopper event, and we, we have to separate the two. The launch of the event, which, is, which took place on press day here over at Mandalay Bay, with the 12 companies pitching, and yes, we had the company that had these earbuds, these earplugs, and if two people had one of these earplugs, they could talk in their natural language, and the translation would happen automatically between these. So you could talk to somebody in English, it would be translated to German, and the person who was German would understand what you were saying, and vice versa. Those are these startups. That's the disruptive technology that's happening right now. On the other side, when you get into the Showstopper event, we do have the startups in there, mm -hmm. but we also have the established companies. Oh, yeah. We do have the Dells, we do have the HPs, we have the Lenovo's. We have all of these large companies as well as the startups. We create, we create pathways, we create ways for the startups to come in with discounted pricing. We have a relationship here with CTA and CES. And so if a company is in Eureka Park, we're offering them a discounted pricing program to come into Showstoppers. Okay. You know, it's our way of also supporting the industry to in, in, the, in the startups in Eureka Park right. uh, as well. And so there were, I'm going to, I, I don't even know the number exactly, uh, but I know of at least 15 or 20 companies last night that were in startup mode that were at this event. And you think about that opportunity, that these companies, they don't have a big marketing plan, they don't have a big marketing budget, they may not have PR people, but yet we're putting them in, there, in here and they're now able to talk to the press. Just as important is that now the press are able to find these companies and find what they call the undiscovered. It's like, I can walk all over CES and I can look at products, but I find the most interesting things at CES, at, at the Showstopper event. For the viewers, it, it is the most overwhelming experience for a newcomer to come here and see this. I mean, how many vendors would you say are on the floor right now? I am told it's somewhere in the 4,4200 range. That's a lot of vendors in one place. I know it's 2 million square feet, according to a conversation. That's a lot of walking today. That's a lot of walking. <laughs> I, I looked at the pedometer on my phone uh, yesterday, and I think I clocked in my shoes before I had started the day in my sneakers and I reset things. I think in my shoes, I had walked uh, eight miles in my shoes. And, and, and my feet were reminding me of it every I single know. step. I was doing the same thing going, oh my goodness, what did I get myself into here? But I had the best time ever at the win. So you've been um, doing Showstoppers for how many years? Showstoppers is now 26 years old. So did you kind of start off with CES? Was that one of your first uh, venues that you worked with? How long have you been do working with CES? Well, when we were working with Comdex, of course, and right. then CES came on. As Comdex declined, CES started its process. Okay. We had other shows that we ran on our own. They were Showstopper, fully Showstopper branded events. For example, we would do digital holidays in New York, always around the holidays. Mm -hmm. We did a number of events. We did uh, events out in California. But this show has always been the biggest show for us. Mm -hmm. We have now shows all over the world. This show is one of our bigger ones uh, at this point. And a lot of it is because the show itself is big. We're a reflection. When we come in and we do a Showstopper event, we enjoy working with show management always. And the beauty of, of the relationships that we do have and when we come into town, we are a reflection of the show, make no doubt about it. If the show is a business to business show, of course, the exhibitors that are in our show are going to be covering business to business, and the media that come in are covering are more trade. This show is mostly consumer. It is evolving. It is changing. We are seeing enterprise coming into this show. We're seeing more mobile applications. We're not getting into the telecom area, such as Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, but we are seeing certain trends here at the show. We saw the IOTs. We saw the autonomous vehicles uh, here at the show. There's a num quite a few automotive companies here, mm -hmm. and in the past they would show the technology that was going into the car. Now they're able to not only show the technology, but they're using they're showcasing the cars. Let's face it. I know that Audi had some major announcements this year with their electric vehicles here at the show. For example, Amazon is right across the hall from us, 
you can imagine what's going on over there because they're showing how Amazon is integrating with the vehicle, you know, and, and voice control and things like that. Oh, everybody's getting into the, the game of AI, artificial intelligence, um, you know, Google has gotten into so many applications. Everybody's kind of diving in, you know. Everybody wants a little piece of Alexa, um, Siri, and, and everything. There's so much abound, and CES is one of the areas that you're at, but you, you do more than just one show a year. You, you have several. We do, we do. Um, we're fortunate enough to do a number of shows. We finished up last night's uh, show, and of course we have some meetings today in, uh, here in Las Vegas. And we all go home for a few weeks, and then we're off to Barcelona for uh, the hour 11th uh, event in Barcelona at the Mobile World Congress. And that is a fabulous show. And you know, and, and again, that's a that's a fairly large show, more biz business to business. Right. Other shows that we do, for example, in, in uh, Berlin is the IFA show. Uh, we are the official media reception over there. We take place the night before the show. We started that show 13 years ago. We only had 10 companies and 130 journalists. And, oh. and the journalists would come in and they'd say, what is this? What are, you, what are you guys doing? They couldn't, from a cultural standpoint, they couldn't understand. I couldn't and grasp the idea that you're just trying to get these guys more exposure and, and build a foundation for them. That's correct. And so this past year, 85 companies participated, 850 journalists representing 65 different countries were all here. So you can just imagine, you know, if you were a small company, either a startup or just a small company, where else are you going to have an opportunity to meet or have an opportunity to meet the, that many journalists from that many countries in a three hour or four hour window of time. They're not. They're not it's not no. gonna happen. No, you can spend all day knocking on a door, but they're coming to you. And that's what's great about this program is the, the media, the exposure is coming into you. And you've built this, you know how to limelight it all and showcase the, the um, startups, which I think is great. You're not taking the credit for yourself. I don't see you up there, everything's all about them. And I think that's what's beautiful and wonderful and engaging about this and why I have truly enjoyed working with you because that's what we're about is showcasing the startups. And you seem to be like doing this all over the world. I, I bet you feel like you're living in a trunk of some kind or a, a luggage. And It's really, it's not the most difficult thing I have to say. And I, I, maybe difficult is the wrong word. It, it's a lifestyle. Um, it's a lifestyle that I'm fortunate to be able to uh, to have and to enjoy. Uh, if I'm not at a trade show, if I'm not at meetings, I'm home, working in my office at home. And of course, like anybody else who might telecommute, shorts and a t-shirt and, and flip-flops. You know, uh, we're not doing video conferencing today, folks. I do my hair, for example. But uh, when I do travel, I get an opportunity to pretty much travel on my schedule, it's when I'm traveling. It's because I I know what I'm doing, right. and I know where I'm going and what I have to do. Uh, when we travel international, for example, we support the Sea Attack show in Japan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll put ourselves in a nice, comfortable seat for that long flight. We'll do. We'll bring press over. We'll host a press reception. We'll bring more awareness to these Japanese countries exactly. companies at the same time. But I'm not on the road every single week banging on somebody's door trying to sell something, and, you know. And, and that makes it easier, not just for the startups, but for you. Everything's relaxed, everything's calm. I mean, yeah, most of the time. This, one, this show is a little bit rough, as you can imagine, uh, you know, when you're dealing with the number of companies that we're dealing with. I give the guys here at, at, at the show, at CES, I don't know how they do it. Uh, th this show is really amazing. Just the, the sheer size of it, I know what we deal with with our small little show here at the CES, you know, with 130 companies and always the questions and what are we doing, when do we come and where do we go and and then you look at this show and the, the same questions have to be asked. Right. They're just being done on a much larger basis. 170,000 people, uh, you know, making sure security's in place, 
all the venues are there, all the food, everything is available. Everything. Exactly. Um, I, I actually interviewed Gary, if you want to know. I, those are the questions I asked him. How did you do all of this and keep your sanity? And uh, he shared his secrets. Yeah, Gary does a nice job with the show, yes, I have to does. say. He does a great job, and he's got a great staff behind him. I mean, the teamship of what everybody's doing to showcase uh, for those startups, for the consumers to learn more about what's going on, for uh, even the big companies, right? Everything's here. But you know what, viewers? Unfortunately, we're gonna have to wrap up and go, but if you wanna see all the showcases of all the new startups this year, go to showstoppers.com. Showstoppers.com. And check us out and see what we did at Launch It. And you know what, Dave? Thank you so much. Thank you I so look much. forward to seeing you, hopefully in Berlin. I hope so. And you know what, viewers? I look forward to seeing you at the next booth. Have a great day. Thank you. That was great.